We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up. Up, bring the house down. Got that big space pump and make them bounce now. Flossing like they bossing and the freaks are coming out now. AEW Unrestricted. It's Aubrey Edwards. It's Will Washington. We are here and we are right around the corner from one of my favorite traditions in the history of AEW. It's AEW Grand Slam. We're coming up here yeah. at Arthur Ashe Stadium. Uh, this is the is this the fourth Grand Slam. It's the fourth Grand Slam. Fourth? Yeah. 21, 22, 23, 24, 20. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's the fourth Grand Slam. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, look, I, I have been at three of the four Grand Slams. Which one did you miss? 22. I was not at 22. Hope you had a good excuse. uh i mean look i i honestly i was just like kind of everywhere at that point um and i wasn't working for aw yet i was at 21 just as a fan i actually took the picture that tony posted like a year ago of uh himself and little uzi vert on the stage that that was my picture yeah i it's, it's always such a good time being in queens and seeing all the fans who um you know new york really doesn't get a whole lot of opportunities to see aew we really save it for this once a year Although uh, we were just in, uh, we just did Forbidden Door on Long Island, but I feel like for to do a dynamite like this, and it's going to be a dynamite and collision this time around, uh, I think it's going to be dope. I'm really excited for it. I hope you're excited for it. And if you haven't got your tickets, AEWTIX.com is the way to be a part of Grand Slam. Yeah, Grand Slam is always a good time. I love going to New York. I love seeing all those crazy fans. I'm excited. I'm going to a Yankees game when I'm out there this time. Just to kind of segue into the podcast a little bit, uh, New York is the fashion capital of the world, I think, or fashion capital of the US. I don't know. Maybe our guests know better. Who do we have on the podcast today, Will? Look, this is going to be quite an episode of AEW Unrestricted because the two men that are joining us today have already found a special place in the hearts of of AEW fans everywhere. You know them. <laughs> they are MXM Collection, Mason Madden, Mansoor. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having us. It's our pleasure. It's your pleasure as well. We like everyone to yes. be pleasured in a group setting like this. Yeah, we're equal opportunity lovers. I'm, I'm all for group pleasuring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have to say, I have been working with the two of you for all of a month and some change. And the amount of times that you guys managed to pop me with little things like that will <laughs> never cease to amaze me. The other day, I was like whistling to myself, what is it? The Kirby's Magic? The Kirby Air Ride song, yeah. The Kirby Air Ride, the Kirby Air Ride melody. I was just whistling that to myself. <laughs> and I always see in my head Kirby like bouncing around. You know when you finish a level mm-hmm. and it's like yeah. <laughs> 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 he does a little dance. But it, it was just like walking through a hallway and I just like in my head I thought it was in my head. I didn't even realize I did it out loud. But I, I was like busy work and I just went and then Mansoor finishes the freaking melody for me. I didn't even realize he was standing there and that's when I realized these are my guys. It's just pure instinct. Yes. This is just this is life working with the two of you, uh, which of course you guys have now been in AEW since July, officially on screen. Uh, you guys made your debut just before Ring of Honor, uh, Death Before Dishonor, and pretty much it was like one pre-tape, and you guys were completely off to the races, and fans were all over it. Talk to me about what the experience was like getting to make that debut. Uh, We had a fantastic time. Uh, More than anything, we were driven by a desire to make a great first impression because as we all know, you only get one chance at a a first impression. So we were lucky enough to work with two awesome, awesome guys in uh, Serpentico and Angelico, of course. Angelico, our new bestie. Angelico, our new bestie. A handsome, handsome man. You know, no offense to Serpentico. I don't know how handsome he is. The guy's wearing a mask. Who can know? But Angelico, I mean, he took a picture with us backstage. We, we wanted to show off that we were all playing Tekken with a... He's a handsome guy. He could fit in. And and yeah. a skinny legend. The guy's like six foot four. He's like tall and slender. Could be a model himself. Also speaks fluent Spanish. Yes. And si. uh, what? Lives in Cancun now? Yeah. Not to dox Full him? time. Yeah. What a guy. Yes. Guy. Yeah, let's dox him. Yeah, if you want to find him dox in him. his home. We'll find him. <laughs> Yeah, no, and Helico is the best. Uh, my favorite thing was I was just riding with him the other day. The parking attendant stopped him, and you know they they asked for our credentials, all of that. And then 
uh, they were like, wait, where are you from? And of course, uh, anytime <laughs> he gets stopped anywhere, he's always asked that question. It's a complicated question. Well, it's a complicated question because <laughs> nobody ever gets it right, but everybody always wants to ask. Yep. Uh, because then you turn it around on them and you go, where do you think I'm from? <laughs> no one ever gets it. It's great. It's great to watch it's it happen. Africa. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? Even with the accent? There's only one place in the world where people talk like this. We're a few years out from District 9. We're a few years out yeah, from that movie. District yes. 9 was a cultural <laughs> moment. It was. So to be fair, most Americans are not culturally savvy. So they mm -hmm. look at him and go, I have no idea where you're from. Well, yeah. They're immediately like, okay, that's got to be a European accent of some sort. And so they'll start guessing all over Europe. Maybe European colonization? Yeah, like. that's as far as you're going to get. <laughs> sneaky. Sneaky. <laughs> like that Elon Musk. That sneaky oh. character. <laughs> uh, one of the things that was uh, brought up constantly uh, as you guys were making your way into AEW is the fact that this is not your first time working for the Khan family. Two-time. Two-time. Two-time Khan employee. <laughs> yes, you are. Because uh, you, of course, signed to the Jags at one point. I was. Um, and actually, which I learned when I met Remet Tony for the first time. I, I'm, we're meeting Tony before uh, de our Death Before Dishonor debut. And Tony walks up to me and he was like, hey, do you remember when I came and interviewed you in 2012 at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill? You were 315 pounds and we were looking to draft you and we, we didn't end up getting you, but we would have loved to get you, which is why we got you. And I was like, <laughs> I had no memory that Tony Khan interviewed me in college because it was so long ago. I knew I worked for them when I was with the Jags. But uh, to my shock and surprise, he had come and met me when I was just a, a wee lad <laughs> at the University of North Carolina and did an interview interview with me and how did he remember how much you weigh it's tony he remembers everything everything that's crazy everything. <laughs> yeah are you kidding me this is tony Cox. this it's is like uh, you guys haven't been here long enough to know that like this is totally a reasonable thing i don't remember how much my daughter weighed when she was born i, how, 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 <laughs> I don't remember what year i graduated <laughs> well, you know what's funny though mansoor you'll appreciate this you of all people i do remember how much my daughter weighed when she was born she was six pounds Nine ounces. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> good number, good number. That's an easy you can one. Never remember. forget that. Of course you can't. You can't forget it. I don't remember how much my son was, but I Did do she remember. Come out, you go, yeah, of nice. course. Said, of course, yeah. And literally they set her <laughs> yeah. down on the scale and I just went, yeah. nice. Your and son should it. have been born at a at a cooler weight. Okay, that's his fault. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's cooler than 69? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Exactly. 420. <laughs> Yeah, so again, you got to come back into the, the Khan family. You got to, to work again for, for Tony. We talked about you making your debut. Uh, one of the things that I found really cool about that time period, of course, we were in our residency at the eSports Stadium in Arlington. You guys almost got to make a home there. It was almost like with those fans for that six-week span, we were there, and I was at every one of those shows. It felt like... The fans were growing more and more fond of you guys as each week passed. And it didn't take that long, right? It felt like even with the first one. But I remember I had to produce one of your segments, and it was one with Top Flight. And it was the one where you guys walk off and are like, uh, uh, you're like, this interview is over. I don't remember how we even came up with that. But I remember it was like we wanted, I wanted to make sure you guys turn around and did the pose. But we didn't have like an ending for it. And so I was like, what if you guys just declared the interview over and, but you guys just walk off anyway and the cameras just stayed with you guys. <laughs> but I remember we, we had done that one, hearing the crowd response to every single piece of it. When the camera panned over to you guys, and you guys got that pop. And then when you did the pose and they lost it for it, that was when it hit me. I was like, this is it. This is, we've got it. We, we have a hit act here. What's been really cool for us, we can say this uh, knowing like where we've been throughout our careers together. It is so amazing. Like our, our hearts are filled with joy and love every time we get a good response because we do not expect it. <laughs> it, it, happened, it happened like very early on. Like we got a good reaction when we first came out. And every time we go out for a new show in a new town, uh, we're like, oh, I sure hope Lexington, Kentucky likes us. And they do. And it's a shock to us every time. And we're so happy and we're so gracious to the, the fans who have supported us and really jumped on board. And I think a big part of it is, like you said, we could kind of make a home in Arlington, kind of show people what we do. And I think what's unique about AEW fans, and Aubrey, I think I've told you this, is that everybody who watches AEW watches all of AEW and everything. Mm -hmm. 
So it's much less of a, you need to be on TV for a couple of years before people start recognizing you. You know, it's not like they're just coming into town to see if uh, such and such is here. They're they're here for AEW and they're hardcore. They're sickos and the sickos know everything that's going on, right? Very much so. I remember the first time I saw you guys at work. I don't think I told you this, but I saw you guys come in. You had a pre-tape and we'll talk about that in a minute and walked into the makeup room and just right into the makeup chair. And I look at them. I'm like, who do these motherfuckers think they are? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I thought we had heat because and I'm texting people are these guys signed what's going on I don't even know but it was because like there's a hierarchy man like there's a, an order there's a schedule it's talked about in advance and I'm like and then as soon as I see the pre-tape I send it to my sister and I went this is your new favorite tag team <laughs> <laughs> these guys are so phenomenal I'm like I, I don't care they could sit in the makeup chair as much as they freaking want I love this it's so amazing it's wonderful it's everything I love about wrestling I love that you guys are just so bought into it. It's a matter of like, you could take it one step, but you guys figure out you're all in. Hey, there you go. Uh, You figure out how to take it one step further each time. It's not just monitor watching. It's monitor watching while showing off your abs. It's, It's everything. What was it like basically coming into AEW and just immediately introducing who you guys are to our audience? I think that one of the biggest lessons we learned uh, in our previous place of employment is that every single second on television matters an incredible amount, right? So Mm -hmm. when we get a monitor shot, which means, you know, we're on camera for five seconds, we want to make sure that those five seconds we're on TV is what people are going to remember out of that segment. TV time is a gift. It really is. And every moment and opportunity you're on TV, you have the opportunity to endear yourself further with the audience. So we knew upon coming in that, hey, whatever this is, especially with our act, people are going to not They're going to want to not like this act. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They are going to come in thinking, I don't want to like these guys. (laughs) And we knew that it was going to be an uphill battle. I just saw a tweet the other day. I I shit you not. I saw a tweet from uh, an AW influencer account. Big fan. (laughs) We love our fans. And he said, he or she or they said, you know, when MXM Collection first debuted, I really didn't want to like them. And I thought it was an embarrassing signing. But now I love them, and I was like, <laughs> "Thanks, I guess." I don't. <laughs> Is that a compliment? In a way, it's kind of the ultimate compliment because, especially for fans of something as passionate as wrestling fans, for them to say, "You know what? I was wrong." That's huge. How many times do you see a wrestling fan say that? Never happens. Never. It never happens. Never. So I almost take that as kind of a mark of pride that just through pure determination and grit and trying to be as entertaining as possible. We turn people's opinions around us on us so quickly. And it's been a huge part. Thanks to, you know, creative in AW Tony. Uh, one of the first things that we did that I thought was genius was our second match in the company was against one of the best, if not the best tag teams in the world, FTR, just a complete polar opposite presentation of our gimmick and our character You put these two diametrically opposed opposites in front of each other and have us have a competitive, hard-hitting match. And instantly, you legitimize us, not just as an entertaining and funny act, but as one that can go in the ring. And that's so incredibly important. We got our foot through the door and we had that opportunity to work with a top team like them and show that we could go with them. That was huge, huge, huge for us. And from that point on, it was off to the races, not just with the backstages, which we love, love, love doing. And an incredible opportunity for us has been able to collaborate with not just the people that are in the segment, but with production, with creative. How many times have we done a backstage where it'll start as one segment and then it'll transform and morph into a funnier, 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 more entertaining segment just because people are pitching ideas and it's like a fun time. Like we're all like it almost like it's a writer's room. Yeah. Like we're, we're, we're doing it as we go. Uh, so it's just been a blast. We go with that. Uh, it's that uh, Simpsons SNL mentality where it's like you're just trying to get like jokes per second at some point. Every five seconds is kind of just like, okay, well, how do we make this funnier? Or how do we elevate this? Or how do we do this in a way that people are going to remember this? Or how are we going to get a a good gif or something like that? I think that kind of attention to detail has really, really helped us. And on top of all of that, even if you were a fan of us from before, nobody knew that we could wrestle at all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> even, our fa- even our fans from before are like, fans. oh, they're such a cute, they try so hard. They're such a cute little act. <laughs> I love them. I love them. But I love them. in AW, I mean, just from the first few matches we had, 
We spent more time in the ring bell to bell, perhaps, than our entire career in our previous company. <laughs> so it's just a matter of getting the opportunity to show that even with this act, this presentation, uh, our, our matches are, are all sort of uh, formatted very similarly, which is that up front, you want to showcase your character and establish, you know, how we want the audience to feel about us and how we want the audience to feel about the opposite team. And then as the match goes on, that's when we get into more hard-hitting action. Once we've established, once we've introduced ourselves and said, hi, nice to meet you. This is who I am. This is who they are. Now it's time to punch each other in the face and do some crazy cool shit. We want to make sure that we satisfy both audiences and especially the people who love both because I think we provide both of those things for really... You know, everybody, like, like I said earlier, we take it as a mark of pride that even the people who say, you know what, I usually don't like this kind of thing, but goddamn MXM, <laughs> they're pretty goddamn good at it. You know, it's, it's kind of like, oh, that, that makes me kind of feel fuzzy inside. <laughs> nah, I love it. And uh, I've got so much more to pick the brains of Mason and Mansoor, and we're going to get to do so right here when AEW Unrestricted continues. AEW Unrestricted, we're back here with MXM Collection. I've, I've, I've had this conversation with you guys privately, but I'm going to bring this up here. You know, there's a lot of people who, who, I hear that all the time, the thing you guys were talking about where people go, uh, you know, this act is going to be a little hokey, and then it, they end up being pleasantly surprised by it. Um, and I've seen a lot of people come around on it, and that's a really great thing. However, I was in from the beginning. <laughs> <And> <laughs> Uh, and I'm talking about, like, I remember the moment I was completely sold was SummerSlam 22. I remember I was watching it at my friend Denise's house, and she was just like, oh, what is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird. Denise doesn't usually go for us. Right. That's usually our targeted audience. <laughs> <laughs> Denise's. But, but uh, you know, it was funny because um, I remember it was the, the moment where Max Dupree was on screen with you guys. You know, she was one of those, oh, well, this is just such a waste, of blah, blah, blah. And I was like, now hold on. This whole thing completely popped me. And, like, by the end of it, I was like, no, this is great. I'm completely sold on this. You are wrong. You are completely wrong. And I feel vindicated in that now knowing where you guys and it's hard to say even are today because I just see the trajectory of where you guys are headed. And I'm like, I, I am one of the bigger MXM fans backstage. But like, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that moment and kind of what you guys felt at that time period was headed you guys' direction. We always appreciate, we always say it's the, the people who know ball. You know, the people who could tell, <laughs> even with the, the little bit that we got in the, the beginning, is like, oh, there's something there. And I think the something for us has always been uh, commitment. It wasn't uh, this character, this presentation was never something that we came up with. But uh, because we're friends, because we're best friends and we have such good chemistry together in general, and because we just like both committed to just going all in on uh, this shtick and everything about it, I think it really registers with people watching at home. They see it's like, they're having fun, so I can have fun watching them have fun, um, which is it's one of the big things that we tell people if they ever get uh, a gimmick, you know, top flight at this point, you've got their new their new little outfits. And I was like, man, if you guys buy in, if you guys go all the way in on this. You guys do airplane spins. Everybody's going to love you. you just <laughs> that was us, by it. the way. That was us. <laughs> we're, we're taking, taking all full the credit. credit for the airplane spin. When they do an airplane, when Layla Gray does the thing with the, <laughs> with the airline gimmicks, that was us. <laughs> so a lot of people are going to either love us or hate us for that. But we said, you boys better buy into this shit. You better Get yourself some little pins, because that's it. That's important, right? Yeah. No, honestly, uh, the uh, the second pre tape you guys had with uh, Top Flight, and you guys were dropping all the plane references, <laughs> had me dying. Like I, it was one of those things. I was like watching you guys film it, and I was like falling out. Like I was gonna ruin the the pre tape in the room if I had to be in there. Uh, as, like when you guys got the snakes on the plane, I was like, all right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's one of the cool things that like we love doing that with Top Flight because we are such crazy characters, it gives other acts the opportunity to bounce off off us, right? Mm -hmm. So it gives them the opportunity to show off their personality, then we get to bounce off each other and it just makes magic. I feel like it's one of the things that's really great about having such a, guys that are so bought into their character. It's something that I noticed really early on in the indies, like when you had someone come in 
and they had an existing character, whoever they were facing was came in with ideas of, okay, your character does this crazy thing. How about we do this? How about we do this? How about we do this? And it just keeps it refreshing because we do a lot of wrestling every week. The sickos watch five hours of television. So it's how can we keep it different? How can we keep it interesting? And I think you guys have done a really great job of that throughout your careers, but also in the short time you've been with us, it's just been kind of like a nice little jolt to everyone else of going, hey, there's this cool new group that we get to play with all the time. Like, let's let's have some fun. Let's like kind of not be so serious and just maybe touch tips a little bit. <laughs> that's, that's been what's really been fun was just uh, interacting with people and having them like Buddy when we wrestled uh, House of Black the other week. We found out about the match a week before and Buddy hasn't texted me in years. <laughs> and he's like, hey, guys, I got some ideas for this match. I think we could really do some fun stuff. I think we can have a really good time, mate. Oh, I got some <laughs> ideas for the match, mate. And he was so excited and he had such good stuff to bring to the table. And it was so it's so refreshing. Yeah, because even like not even as a viewer, just as a wrestler, when you're wrestling several times a week, every week. Uh, having a match that's just, you know, a competitive high, high stakes match with another team that's also competitive and high stakes, it, it can get a little graining. It can get a little tiring to because there's only so much story that can be told, especially in a completely cold match. But uh, when you're given different pieces to the puzzle, then all of a sudden you can have more fun with it. And a big credit to the environment that we're in right now, there was no world before where we could go into uh, a night with a match like we did with uh, House of Black and ask, can we have three extras to be judges and have them get killed? <laughs> <laughs> there was no way that would ever happen for us uh, before. Stuff like that, because of the environment that's you know been provided to us at this point, allows us to even spread our wings even further and have even more fun. It's such an excellent little microcosm of what we're all about, that House of Black match. Because like the week before, it's like, all right, guys, you and House of Black, Friday night fashion fight. Okay, cool. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and then we all got to figure it out together and make it the most entertaining thing it could possibly be. And it's it's an excellent summary of what we're all about because we came in with those judges and we established this fun little neat uh, storyline thread throughout the match where they were doing the scores and then bam, Brody kills them and then suddenly it turns into choke slams and meat crashing into meat and slapping and and the crowd's going meet 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 because mason and brody are slamming into each other and there's there's crazy near falls and high spots and it's like that's what we're all about we're all about an exciting entertaining storytelling kind of style i think there is a sort of synthesis and really aw is kind of the only place where that can happen because in any other company we'd kind of get pigeonholed mm -hmm. but not only do we get to be that entertaining and funny act we also get to go like we said earlier when the bell rings so it's just been a blast like it's 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 been so rewarding to be able to do both of those things so that we can show everybody what we're capable of I think it's also really great because that extra was definitely very excited to wear plywood shoes, a trash bag. <laughs> I was there. So, okay, me and Billy Starks, <laughs> Billy's amazing because she wanted to help us do this. Oh, I yeah. literally, I held that two by four on his foot as she rolls and rolls like miles of tape because that, that was coming off. Every time he took a step, I had to carry him to catering on my back because I didn't want the two by fours on his feet to come off. Oh, the other two extras had to carry him down the ramp yes. in order to get to the spot with the numbers. It was brilliant. And you could tell they were having a great time. They were like, guys, should we just take the shoes off? No, like, no, no, he needs the shoes. He needs the shoes. <laughs> They're clogs. It's a reference to, to Tommy's homeland. Uh, <laughs> Again, like I said, it, it, I, I think what's also been really interesting, the amount of teams you guys have gotten to work with since you've been in AEW. And granted, there's still plenty more to go. But the fact that you got to start with FTR, you got to work with Top Flight, right? You guys have gotten to work with the Acclaim. We've seen you guys have these backstage segments. You've got, we've seen you guys have these matches. It, it is very quickly getting the AEW audience acclimated to you guys. At the same time, that begs the question to me of like what teams – are still on the docket? What teams are you still looking forward to getting to have those moments with that you haven't yet? That is a great question. I mean, obviously, we got to call out the Young Bucks. The way they are dressed is just tragic. <laughs> what are we looking at? What is with the vest, <laughs> the sleeveless vest, naked underneath with the pet? I'm sorry. I know there are EVPs, but Matthew, Nicholas, we're going to have to find you for fashion faux pas. 
But of course, that being said, other than that, they are, I think we can all say, one of, if not the best tag team of all time. The legacy that they have left, and even just in the founding of AEW beyond their wrestling careers is truly incredible. So getting to share a ring with them. They're a team, if we can kind of um, open the curtain a little bit, we've gone to multiple times after our matches and asked, what can we be doing better? Because they're another tag team who kind of married funny goofiness with serious, intense, high-paced action. I mean, like when people say, oh, the Bucks were just, it's just spots and spots and spots. That's absolutely not true. One of the first times I ever saw, this is one of my favorite spots to do, uh, is a hot tag where the heel get the, the heel team gets the tag first. The Bucks were the first people I ever saw do the thing where they come in and trip on the bottom rope, eat shit. Bam, there's the hot tag and then the bump and feed. It's just like little stuff like that that just like enhance the, the, those so little smart. character moments. Yeah. yeah, so smart. And even just match structure. Like I always say that the Bucks, they sort of perfected in the early 2010s that tag team match structure where you could actually predict what the crowd was going to say and chant and react based on how you called the spots. Like they knew, all right, this is where they're going to chant. This is awesome. This is where they're going to chant fight forever. Like they could have a match where they knew exactly how the crowd was going to react after every single sequence. So that's just like a level that we're trying to get to. Other teams that I think about, uh, Mason, do you have any in mind? I mean, we're, we're really just having a blast every week at somebody new obviously the biggest thing was the we haven't actually actually had the match yet but uh the acclaimed was something that everybody was clamoring for immediately almost it was <laughs> it's uh yeah. it's really cool to see and scissoring uh, and touching tips like kind of writes itself in the fact that like you guys meant to be yeah <laughs> it's meant to be <laughs> we're simpaticos i said on twitter a while back it's been a long time since my tip felt the touch of a scissor, but I think it's time to reintroduce these two concepts. I do. Your tip with some scissors. He's very passionate about it. <laughs> I'm very about passionate about it. Don't get I'm him very started. passionate about Don't it. Don't get him started. Don't get me started about tips and scissors. He almost sued his mother. I did not threaten litigation against my he mother. I thought about it, but I didn't do it. I didn't. I didn't bring it Okay, away. okay, okay. Before before this gets out of hand, before we have to get lawyers involved, we're going to take a quick break and then come back and talk on here on AEW Unrestricted. AEW Unrestricted. It's Aubrey and Will with our guest MXM Collection. We're in Seg 3, something you guys are very unfamiliar with. Oh, wow! Steph, How dare Steph, you? Steph. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, you're not wrong, but you don't have it's to true. say it. <laughs> It's damn true. <laughs> I mean, I, th I think we're on our way there. I think at some point we'll get we there, right? Uh, I think we we've gotten two, and and this is the first company that's had us in two segments. Imagine what we could do with three. Nobody. I mean, it, again, it's it's one of those things. Where you walk in, you get to have the conversation about match times, and I mean, what what did you do the first time you were told uh, it's going to be a three three seven? Oh, we went through our rolodex of uh, false finishes, which were about like. <laughs> two moves <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was actually us on the indies when we when we first got uh, released we were like what do we do all we do is a double back elbow i don't know <laughs> <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna make some new moves <laughs> we have to make up and we did we literally had to make up new moves and you know thank god because like that period of time on the indies where we got to do a bunch of indies in america we got to go to japan we got to go to europe when we were on the indies we had the goal of going to aw that was always the goal Honest to God, like even while we were in WWE, me and Mason were we're kind of uh, we're different a little bit, if that makes sense. You know, if there's a comparison to make, it's like if WWE is like a Michael Bay movie, I see AEW as like a David Lynch movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, we're we're auteur. Yeah, <laughs> I'll take that. There was always something so alluring about that. I remember we were sitting when AEW first started. We were in NXT. And we'd be sitting in that auditorium watching NXT while people would be on their phones watching AEW. And there was always yeah, like an I element of that outsider intrigue, that new sort of revolutionary thing where we were like, God, I feel like if we were over there, we could be doing something really special. So it, 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 like all these years later, it's so rewarding to actually show up and for it to kind of take off in that sense where creatively speaking, I think it's just firing off on all cylinders where the synergy has been awesome because getting the opportunity to actually have a little bit of creative freedom while also working with the creative team in AEW has, I think, for us, produced some of the best things that we've ever done. So it's just been awesome. You guys have such great chemistry together and you have such a different backgrounds, yet you're best friends. Like, how did this all happen? How did you guys get paired together? What is the secret to your amazing friendship? Complete? 
coincidence. Yeah, it was an accident. From the day I walked into the performance center, we were like like this. It was pretty much instant. Like literally, the fir- you walked in the first time and I got out of the ring and hugged you <laughs> uh, based on nothing? Based on nothing. <laughs> maybe, maybe our internet presence. Like that was pretty much it. Yeah, our mutual internet presence, I guess. That was it. Yeah, because... Even though he is the son of an NFL player who grew up in Massachusetts, who went on to become an NFL player on his own, and I was a guy who grew up on the other side of the world in Saudi Arabia, who then moved to San Francisco and went to school for acting in New York, we somehow are pretty much the same person in radically different bodies. (laughs) So it's just been like an instant connection. And then... When we were put together uh, for the male model tag team, it was com- I, I like we even said to them we were like, "Do you guys know we're like best friends?" They were like, "No, you we were both just not doing anything." So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they said we were good looking, so that's a plus. Yes, you're both good looking and not doing anything, so we figured we'd throw you guys together. That was it. Hey, however you get work, <laughs> exactly, and that was kind of our philosophy too because uh, it was so radically different from what both of us had been doing. You know, Mason was a gimp. I was the sort of PR representative for their relationship with Saudi Arabia. And the thing is, like, I had to be a very squeaky clean, clean cut guy when really that's not who I am at all. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a psycho. Like, you know what I mean? I, yeah, that, that's the thing that's like shocked me the most about getting to know you is that you were like the squeaky clean PR representative. Like, that's all anybody knew from you. No, he's a he's a dirty, grimy stick. I'm a dirty, (laughs) disgusting gremlin. I'm a goblin. That's why I get along with him so well. When I find out you're like the same kind of internet deviant that I was in the early 2000s, it's great. That's why I just saw that Outrunner shirt and I instantly knew what Meat Spin was. Like, that's just, that's just who I am. (laughs) That's who we are. Like, I'm I'm sorry. So, I enjoy portraying whatever they want me to portray. But this, the like kind of clean cut blue chipper Saudi guy was kind of difficult because I had to kind of be that in real life too when I would do interviews and stuff you know and I was very proud to represent uh, my home country but I wanted so much more in terms of portraying a character and like having something to chew on and that's what's been great about as MX I'm just picturing like Mulan but like the who I am inside is just like an international <laughs> it's just a disgusting <laughs> goblin it's <laughs> It's me looking in the mirror and, and seeing myself with just the troll face. like. <laughs> and Mason has a much better handle on it. He is way more self-controlled than me. It's because I've been in the, the public eye for uh, a much larger portion of my life, I guess. And, yeah, um, and because he's he's been yeah. a father for a much larger portion as well. I keep pumping him out. <laughs> he just can't stop. He can't stop. Can't stop. <laughs> Can't stop. <laughs> Sneezes and there's another kid. <laughs> but actually, that's that's been part of why I think our segments in AEW, especially the backstages, have been like so much fun. Is that we both come in with ideas, not just us, but like creative, like the writers that are involved. It's so easy to take our act and come up with something funny and unique for every single segment we do. And that's what's been great about when when they came at us in WWE. Hey, we want you to be male models. Everybody came up to us and was like, "Listen, I know you hate this." I know you want to die, but you just have to do it. I was like, it's not that bad. It's like, <laughs> if this were the seventies, like everybody there, I mean, there was a repo man. Like, what are you, <laughs> that's pro wrestling. A lot of the success of what this act is going to be is based on like what you said earlier, Aubrey, it's just commitment. Mm-hmm. Well, like you were talking about the water commercial. We both thought of that gasoline scene in Zoolander where they're spraying each other with gasoline. And we were like, what if that's Wait, what we do? Yeah. What if we, yeah. oh, 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 oh. and we're, we're, hitting the beach ball around and we're we're throwing the frisbee and I, i'll never forget mason's trainer is booker t and <laughs> booker t saw mason as this monster this heavy this vicious giant that was the great black hope for him he, <laughs> he used to say you're gonna be the next brock lesnar and- the black brock lesnar i love that every black person i know by the way has a great booker t impersonation <laughs> No, like it's for me as well. It's like shook it, duck it, quack, quack, right? Like we can all do it. <laughs> we all have we all have an uncle that's just like it. Yes. <laughs> we're we're pouring water on each other and we're spraying water and hosing each other off. And Booker T walks in and see this and goes, Oh no. Oh come on, man, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but we were all in we were all in then and and it's so awesome to finally kind of feel like being all in is paying off i mean we, we carry that energy into everything we do here 
Ah. Oh my God. Even winning matches, Aubrey, you've, uh, you've been our referee, thank God, for many of our matches, and you were so game. Which is amazing. Oh, dude! <laughs> for for our little antics, I cannot tell you when you, you guys were on when you guys were on Rampage. I look at the card and I turn to Paul and go, "Dude, I need this yeah, match. I need it. I need it." He's like, "Okay, <laughs> sure." And I walk to you guys. I'm like, "I have an idea." <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> and even I have an idea for when you win. A, 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 it's been perfect because like just raise having you raise our arms and saying, "No, no, no," turn it around, and the turn and the yeah. look. <laughs> that's just another way for us to be different. Like everything we do. Right. Such a big part of what we do is going through all of the motions of the pro wrestling stuff and figuring out a way is like, it doesn't make sense that we would just, it's like you said, we wouldn't just watch the, the screen backstage. We wouldn't do that. It's always something like we wouldn't just have our hands raised. Like it's, it's always about elevating those silly tropes. And I guess that's what kind of makes it fun in being in this place where it is a little bit more of like a, I guess like a smarter, more um, knowledgeable of the of the type of storytelling that is pro wrestling that allows all of those things to pay off so much more. And I think people appreciate it. I think for me, the biggest thing is like, if you have coworkers, like the guys who are in the truck, they've been doing wrestling for years, not only just with us, but for decades even. So something as simple as holding up hands and turning simultaneously, if you can pop the truck and give them something that they've never seen before, you're clearly doing something right. That's my stance. Those are guys who've been working since WCW days. Like they've seen it all. Right? Yeah. So to, to, They've seen some shit, man. <laughs> to have them see something new, that's, that's a very high praise. Well, I just wanted to say that having you guys on this show, there's like a whole bunch of questions we never even got to. But the beauty of this is that we're just in the beginning. This is the beginning phases for the both of you guys. And I have a feeling that this is one of those interviews that people are going to be able to revisit and talk about the beginning stages of what MXM was able to do in AEW. So thank you for being here. It has been such a pleasure. Oh, my God. Thank you guys for having us. We've had a blast. Please bring us back. We'd love to do it again. Uh, we tend to ramble. We're great on rewatch. We're great on rewatch. We, like you said, we put little Easter eggs in everything we do. Hey, there we go. So uh, keep that in mind. We, we like to lay eggs. That's us. Awesome. Yeah. I'm an egg layer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not laying eggs here on the AEW Unrestricted, which you can catch on all of your favorite podcast platforms, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Please leave us a rating and a review of uh, Apple Podcasts, anything, uh, whatever Android users use um, to get their podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> you freaks. <laughs> whatever still whatever weird, disgusting shit you guys use. Look, no, 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 here's the thing. I was an Android user like a year and a half ago, but, but the thing he was, was on his first day, I told me I had to change. Yeah, but the problem is, like, I don't even know what app to use anymore. Either way, yeah. uh, get us on all of your favorite podcasts platforms don't forget you can also check out video editions of this show and you'll want to check out video editions of this specific episode oh yeah yes. hey, buddy. check out our youtube channel uh just search aew unrestricted hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode and catch up on all the latest aew shows on the go when you download the tnt and tbs apps from the app store and google play then sign up for our weekly newsletter at tntdrama.com slash elite fleet to get the updates on upcoming shows live events sweepstakes merchandise and more aew dynamite is on tbs wednesdays at 8 p.m aew rampage is on tnt fridays at 10 p.m and aew collision live every saturday night at 8 7 central on tnt ring of honor streams every thursday on honor club otherwise i'm will washington that's aubrey edwards thanks for listening to aew unrestricted touch tips touch my tap come on throw your hands up let me see you unrestricted Turn it.